Thank you for waiting, everyone, and welcome to our third session toward transformative change for a sustainable future, understanding the diverse values of nature and its contributions to people. Well, as you know, climate change and the loss of biodiversity are accelerated every day by human activities. So it's important to properly understand the value that nature brings to our society in order to improve the way we make decisions. This session will explore the possibilities for a social transformation that can lead to a sustainable future environment. Our moderator is Hashimoto Shizuka, Associate Professor of the Graduate School of Agricultural and Life Sciences at the University of Tokyo. He's been working on ecosystem service assessment and its application to landscape planning. So Professor Hashimoto, let's hand things over to you now. All right. Uh, thank you, Miki-san. So let me start with uh, setting scene for these sessions. Yesterday, uh, as you know, uh, we had a lot of discussions on the global crisis, such as climate change and the needs for urgent actions. Our session is also about the, the global crisis, and we pay more attention to the biodiversity aspect, more specifically the issue of how we recognize and value the nature. So biodiversity is recognized as one of the planetary boundaries, and currently the state of biodiversity goes beyond the safe operating spaces. There is an IPCC-like organization for biodiversity called IPBES, the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. The, this organization was established in 2012 to bridge the gap between science and policy for the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity. Now it has 139 member states. In 2019, the IPBES published its first global assessment report. The report warned that there is a dangerous decline in biodiversity and its contribution to people. For example, one million species are threatened with extinction now. Many of the nature's contribution to people, or also known as ecosystem services, assessed in this assessment have been on the declining trend in the past 50 years across the globe. Except for a few material contributions, such as food, feed, timber, and bioenergies, which were on an increasing trend. In expense, we are losing lots of other nature's contribution to people, like climate change regulations, water quality uh, purifications, um, habitat creations, and pollinations. They are all on the declining trend. So the report also warned that these declines are threatening the integrity of biosphere and risking the sustainability of our future. The report also argued that addressing these direct drivers of decline in nature, including land use and sea use change, direct exploitations, climate change, and so on, is not enough to halt and reverse the current trend. So many people argue that the curve, the bending the curve of nature's decline requires transform transformative change in our society. But the question is, how? So this is why we organize this session. So our value underpins our behavior and ultimately influence the status of nature through you know, our consumptions, through our way of productions, how we extract resources from the nature. I think yesterday, some of the sessions touched upon the similar issues. The problem is our socioeconomic activities have been often trapped by a utilitarian economic perspective. We tend to prioritize short-term material gains from nature, such as food and timber, we often overlook the other type of contributions of nature and their diverse values. We must recognize 
that there are many nature's contributions that are not traded in the market. For example, nature can um, regulate quantity and quality of water. They also regulate soil conditions. They provide us the pollination services um, that underpins agricultural productions, but they are not in the market. I'm not saying that we should, we should you know, put the price tag on those services or the contributions. That are, uh, we tend to overlook the importance of those contributions um, because we don't know, the, know their existence. We don't, you know, because they are not uh, recognized in the market. But uh, the problem is, is that really uh, the, the market very important? I also want to point out there are many other contributions from nature that can hardly be measured by uh, or in economic terms. For example, our way of life, our sense of praise, place attachment and identity are often nurtured through our interaction with nature. I'm not sure if this is suitable for economic variations. So there are increasing calls for recognizing the diverse value of nature and mainstreaming them into our decision making. So in this session, we'd like to introduce and share with you the recent discussion on the idea of diverse value of nature and their role in societal transformation for more just and sustainable futures. So to do so, uh, we invited three distinct guests, all of them were or have been involved in the IPES process. Let me quickly introduce them. So uh, Professor Unai Pascal, He's an ecological economist and a professor at Basque Center for Climate Change, Spain. Uh, Unai recently served as a co-chair of the IPES assessment of the diverse values and the variation of nature. Dr. Swain Arn, a natural resource economist and chief research fellow at uh, Korea Environment Institute. So Swain was also involved in the IPES barrier assessment as one of the, uh, the lead authors. She, ha she also has rich experiences in the environmental uh, variations. Then Dr. Caroline Lundquist, a marine biologist, she's sitting next to me. Uh, she's, in a, she's a principal scientist at uh, the National Institute for, of Water and Atmospheric Research, New Zealand. And she's also an associate, associate professor at uh, the University of Auckland. Caroline and I are currently serving as uh, IPES multidisciplinary expert panel member, and we are also a co-chair of the IPES task force on scenario models. So uh, first of all, I'd like to invite Professor Nai Pascal for, for his short talk. As I already introduced, um, he led the IPES barrier uh, assessment as a co-chair. This assessment is expected to be a guide to navigate transformative pathway for more just and sustainable futures. And this assessment was participated by more than 300 experts from across the world and built on more than 13,000 differences. So he will introduce why recognizing the diverse value of nature is important for such a transformative change. So Unai, uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Hashimoto. I, it's, uh delight and very honored to be sharing this time with all of you, uh, both who are uh, present in the venue and many other people uh, watching from, from other places around the world. Um, may, could we just put the slides presentation, please? Okay, so um, what I would like to show in a, in a, just a few minutes is a snapshot of the main, some of the main results of the uh, IPBES values assessment that was presented to the general public around the world in July when it was approved by the plenary, those 139 states uh, who are parties to IPBES. Uh, please, next slide. <clears throat> so <clears throat> there you have a QR uh, code. Uh, if you would like to download a brief document which has all the main 
uh, results uh, written in a way that could be understood by anyone, uh, whether they are academics, policymakers, lay people from any sector. So uh, if you're interested and you'd like to learn more about a few things that I'm going to be able to say today, please uh, check, check that document, please. Next one. So <clears throat> I think uh, Professor Hashimoto has already set the scene or the, the main idea um, we know that uh, it is very important to recognize the diversity of values of nature if we really are serious and we uh, really want to um, transform our ways of life, our economic sectors, uh, the way we consume, the way we interact with each other, so that we have a more just and sustainable future. <clears throat> this is especially uh, important uh, when <clears throat> we take decisions at the local scale whether it's a city, a neighborhood, even in our household, our families. Yeah? But it could also happen um, that <clears throat> this uh, diversity of values arise in many other scales, uh, for example, at the national scale, but also at the global scale. So that's why IBES is looking at all these different scales. Um, and taking into account all those values, especially at the local level, uh, is the main ingredient to succeed and to move towards outcomes that are good or better for people and nature. Please, next one. So <clears throat> the challenge that we face is that people around the world, even people in a small city or village, we all value nature in very different ways. Why? Well, we value uh, nature differently because we have different types of knowledge systems, diff uh, different traditions, culture, uh, languages, uh, even our environmental and historical contexts are different. So the key question is, how can we bridge all these different values to take decisions that will be good for humanity and at the same time good for the planet? Okay, so this is the big challenge and I'm going to try to show and present to you a few of the um, answers around this question. Next, please. So <clears throat> one of the issues, and I think Professor Hashimoto has already introduced this topic, is that <clears throat> we have a biodiversity crisis, the same as we have a climate crisis, we have a biodiversity crisis. <clears throat> and both crises are connected in different ways. One of the connections are the fundamental drivers of, the, of this double crisis situation. And that's <clears throat> because we are, in our everyday lives, uh, we are more and more uh, I using uh, um, a very narrow set of values of nature. And that very narrow set has to do with very utilitarian and market approaches to understand what is the value of nature for people's well-being. Having said that, there are many opportunities to be able to uh, identify and integrate the huge diversity of the values of nature into political and economic decision making, uh, making to try to achieve better outcomes for people and, and, and nature, uh, to transit or transform our ways of life towards a more just and sustainable future. Please, next one. <clears throat> so what the values assessment has done is uh, conceptualize first, what are those different types of values? And one of those values that are really at the core uh, of our decision making are what we call instrumental values. The instrumental values of nature are those values that we understand very clearly because they uh, we understand nature as a way to meet our desires, our needs, our demands, whether it's food, whether it's water, whether it's jobs. Um, and of course, all those instrumental values are extremely important. Um, the problem is that there are many other types of values that matter to people, um, uh, not only the instrumental ones, as um, Professor Hashimoto has also mentioned. There are intrinsic values of nature that also matter uh, to nature itself. I mean, what is the value of a species if we don't know what is that species good for us? Well, it does have those species and ecosystems do also have other types of values. The problem is that uh, we have uh, we, or we tend to ignore those values, but also we have to realize that a lot of conservation policies 
do take into account those intrinsic values of nature, and sometimes they don't take into account the instrumental values of nature. So we do have uh, challenges and, and um, clashes uh, in between values when we take decisions. Next one, please. <clears throat> it is fundamental to realize that when we can't, when when we don't bridge these values, <clears throat> when we have clashes uh, among values. Uh, mainly because there are also clashes of power relations uh, in society, this undermines our best intentions to protect nature. So we have to take into account power relations and ways, uh, methods to try to bridge those values together in a sensible way. Next one, please. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> and we know we know how to value nature. I mean, science has been uh, producing methods uh, that are very robust, and we have more than 50 methods to value the very diverse set of the values of nature. And many of these methods are being applied by scientists and practitioners all around the world. The problem is that a lot of those results are not being taken up by policymakers. And this is a big, big challenge that we face and something that we have to improve uh, massively. Next one, please. <clears throat> so, um, we know that we have to shift away from the values that overemphasize very short-term goals, goals about economic growth only or individual material gains, and we have to move towards enriching or putting uh, sustainability-aligned values in decision-makers' uh, tables. They have to realize that there are sustainability-aligned values that are very important to sustain our ways of lives, the planet, all kinds of nature, and as well, our well-being. So there are different ways to transform our societies, taking into account these types of values. I really encourage you to read uh, the different types of uh, pathways that might exist, and my colleagues today on the stage uh, would also talk about that. <clears throat> Next one, please. But what is fundamental uh, from this uh, document from this um, evaluation carried out by 300 people is that first we need to undertake valuation. Second, we have to integrate those results into everyday decision making. We have to use that to reform our policies and regulations everywhere in the world. And we also have to shift our societal norms and goals. For example, what we mean by progress and well being. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. And I really encourage you to uh, go deep into the document that I shared before. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Nye, uh, Pascal, for, for your thought-provoking talk. A uh, good thing for the Japanese audience here is that now the Ministry of the Environment of Japan is translating the summary for policymakers of this value assessment into Japanese, which will be available hopefully by the end of uh, next March. So, so if you are interested in, uh, in the, the Japanese version, uh, please just uh, wait for a few more, min uh, few, few more months uh, so that you can have a, a, a look. And uh, um, I was uh, uh, particularly uh, impressed with uh, uh, the presentation by uh, Professor uh, Pasquale um, especially, I, I'm impressed with the message that uh, the overlooking values held by local people often lead us to the social environmental conflict, which undermine the effectiveness of existing policies. And we need to take care of the power, you know, unbalances between the stakeholders in making right decisions. Also, the idea of value-related leverage points were very interesting to me. Um, so undertaking the valuation of natures and updating their result into our decision making is one of the leverage points to make a transformative change. But it also, the leverage points includes deforming the existing policies, rights and regulations, the shifting societal norms and goals how we measure our success or the, the goals, or how we define our you know, good quality of life matters. So, so thinking about the transformation of those thinking is also important. Um, that's, uh, I think, uh, what I have learned from his presentation. Um, thank you very much.
So uh, I'd like to now invite uh, uh, Dr. Swain An. Um, based on her involvement in EPES value assessment in her talk, she will introduce uh, existing methodologies and approaches for varying nature and how they were used in previous practices across the world. Also, she will introduce South Korea's effort in environmental variations. So, Dr. Swain An, over to you. Thank you. Um, I am very happy to be here, and thanks for the invitation. Uh, my presentation is composed of two parts. Uh, the first part is to present main result uh, from the chapter three of IPES uh, value assessment. And the second part is to um, briefly introduce environmental valuation information system in Korea. Next slide, please. Okay. Okay, following the overview of IPES value assessment uh, by UNAI in previous presentation. Uh, next slide, please. Um, next slide, please, did you? Okay, thank you. Uh, following the overview of IPES value assessment by UNAI in previous presentation, um, I will narrow down to the valuation method, which is the subject of the chapter three of the assessment. Uh, the purpose of the chapter is to identify key considerations for making valuation choices and developing guidance for improving valuation practice. Um, we started with the six research questions, uh, which are what are the purposes, uh, which methods are applied, and which values are listed, uh, when and where are valuations undertaken, and whose values are considered, and how reliable and feasible is valuation. And we employed a systematic re uh, literature review to find the answers uh, to these questions. Next slide, please. Um, let's start with definition of valuation. Uh, the valuation is the intentional process. Uh, to make explicit the values individuals or communities hold about nature, nature's contribution to people, and human nature relationships. Um, valuation is carried out by applying established valuation procedures, and there is a wide portfolio of valuation methods um, developed over the last uh, four decades. Next slide, please. Okay, um, from the uh, screening of the literature, um, about the uh, 48,000 studies are identified uh, where uh, explicit geo-referenced information is provided. Uh, this is the evaluation atlas map, which shows the distribution of uh, 48,000 studies. Uh, as you can see, the um, Europe and North America regions uh, produce relatively more studies uh, compared to other regions. Next slide, please. Um, now we narrow down further to the studies uh, which have in, um, enough information to answer to uh, our research questions. Uh, we called it in-depth review, which include 1,163 studies. From now on, the results are based on the in-depth reviews. This slide shows the habitat where, um, okay, I think the, uh, this, uh, this slide shows the, the purpose of valuation. The Y valuation, we identified three purposes. First is to uh, improve the state of nature, how? Uh, by assessing the importance of ecosystem capacity, condition, and sustainability. And second is to improve quality of life by revealing the importance for human being. Third one is to improve justice by recognizing diverse values to ensure fair decision making. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, Let's move to the method families. Uh, we, identified more, uh, we identified more than 
uh, 50 different valuation methods and came up with the discipline neutral groupings. Uh, Nature-based valuation involves uh, measuring behavior-based valuation relies on choices people make. Statement-based valuation gather information from what people say about the values. And integrated valuation combines different sources of information. Next slide, please. Specific values uh, are meant by judgment regarding nature's importance in particular situations. Uh, instrumental values are related to the means or use. Uh, contrast, intrinsic values are values independent from people. The word intrinsic speaks itself. Uh, note that 74% uh, 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 of valuation studies are measuring uh, instrumental values, indicating that we are still focusing on uh, the values, valuation of benefits to people, especially in monetary terms. This is just the, uh, this is the gap we have. Next slide, please. So this is value indicators. Uh, usually they are presented in uh, biophysical, monetary, and sociocultural. Next, please. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, this is the, uh, uh, the uh, method family. We identified uh, four groups. Uh, we are matching with the specific values and examples of our products. So we, this is just uh, more information about the four different method groups, and how they are matching up uh, different angles. Next, please. Next slide, please. Okay, next slide, please. This one is just information for, for you. Next slide, please. And this is the habitat. Um, in which evaluation was studied. As you can see, the forest uh, is the most habitat studied uh, in our database, but this does not mean that less, uh, less studied habitats are not important. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the, uh, the, uh, the photo we take in nine, uh, 2018 before COVID-19. Okay, next please. Okay, uh, I am moving to the second part of my presentation. Um, but before I uh, do that, I'd like to mention a few words about the uh, evaluation process and choice of method. Um, I would like to say uh, the evaluation process can be described as uh, five iterative, uh, iterative steps to address uh, trade-offs between relevance, scientific robustness, and resource requirements, such as time, budget, and et cetera. And the uh, appropriate choice of method involves identifying their strengths and weakness and weighing out those strengths and weakness in light of the purpose of the evaluation. Okay, let's move to the second part of my presentation, uh, which is the Environmental Evaluation Information System in Korea. Uh, EBC is the online platform developed and operated by Korea Environment Institute since 2011. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Um, we, uh, the previous one, I think it skipped the previous one. Uh, previous one, please. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, this shows a description of EB's classification, uh, uh, environment evaluation information system. And uh, I'd like to show the uh, EB's classification. Next, please. This is the main. Uh, the database includes a total of 315 economic valuation studies conducted in Korea for ecosystem and ecosystem services, which is 65% of the total. Um, valuation refers to mostly with economic valuation in Korea, but things change lately to include diverse concepts of values. Okay, so uh, next one, please. So 
So this is just a summing up of my uh, presentation. Uh, it's a two by two table which shows the uh, number of studies by ecosystem 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 service conducted in Korea. So and next please. And this is the uh, uh, the ecosystem service we are having in our database. Next, okay. So this uh, this is the la a label for each ecosystem service in our previous table I showed. Um, I like to uh, say uh, in conclusion that Korea uh, is a good example of the valuation study uh, heavily focused on economic valuation, so that uh, we can uh, have some. Um, uh, lessons uh, from our uh, 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 practice so that uh, we acknowledge the, diver, uh, the necessary, uh, the necessity of uh, need for the diverse valuation. So um, this is the, uh, the end of my presentation and, uh, and thank you for the listening. Over to you, Hashimoto. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. So Um yeah, thank you very much for, for your stimulating presentation, especially um, about the, the current state of the, the variation of the natures. Um, I think it was very interesting to know that the, the majority of the variations focuses on improving the status of the nature, and they pay more attention to the instrumental aspect, and less attention were paid to uh, the good quality of life and, and, uh, and uh, societal justice. So, which is the current limitations? But I, I recognize that uh, um, the, the in the in your uh, second part of your presentations, so, so Korea has some component focusing on the health-related uh, uh, variations uh, in your database. So, so I think it, it is very impressive, and I, I, the case in Japan is similar. Um, as far as I know, they pay more attention to instrumental aspect when they make variations of the natures and. Uh, so, but uh, uh, well, maybe the, the the summary for policymakers recently published um, by IPES on this barrier assessment um, will give us a bit more uh, uh, broader perspective uh, of the needs of uh, uh, you know the new variation studies. Um, thank you very much for for your presentations. Um, then. Um, then I move to, I'd like to move to the last talk, um, which is by Dr. Caroline Lundquist. Um, she has read the development of the Nature Futures Framework as a co-chair of the IPES Task Force on Scenario Models. So Nature Futures Framework is a new framework of scenario development, focusing on desirable human-nature relationships. So this framework is welcomed by the member states of IPES um, in, well, this July, uh, and it has been become one of the offshore IPES products, uh, which is a very good thing. So she will explain why we need new scenario framework uh, to discuss desirable future for us, and how the Nature Futures Framework differs from other approaches. So, Caroline Lundquist, are you okay? Yep. Thank you, Shizuka, and thank you to the Tokyo Forum and to all of its many sponsors for hosting me here in Tokyo this week. Uh, can I have the slides, please? So you've heard from the two prior speakers a lot about values and values that we have for nature. These are these instrumental or material values that often dominate how we do decision making about nature right now. But we also have these other types of values that we have for nature, those values just of nature for itself or intrinsic values, as well as these what we call relational values. And these are these really difficult to quantify values quite often that are things that represent either our culture or our connections to nature. So the question is, how do we actually take all these nature values and turn them into ways that they influence decision making? So as Shizuka mentioned, one of the things that we use is scenarios. Now we have developed a new scenarios framework for biodiversity, but a lot of this came out of why do we need a new scenarios framework? And within one of the first IPES assessments, and this was back in 2016, they choose to do an assessment on scenarios. So what are scenarios and can we use them for policy support for making decisions about biodiversity? And I'm trying to summarize in four bullet points here this about 600 page assessment 
But in short, there are scenarios out there. We can use them for biodiversity, but quite often they're created for other purposes. For example, climate change and the impacts of climate change. And they're often also used in the finance world. And because we don't have biodiversity specific scenarios, this means that nature is often very poorly represented in these types of scenarios. And often they don't have positive futures for nature. Um, and a lot of these positive futures can come, for example, from talking to local people about different strategies that they've done in a local place that have worked. So can we take these small scale scenarios or seeds for positive futures and bring them into larger scenarios frameworks? So these were these basic ideas coming out of the scenarios framework. And here is just one example. This is using the climate scenarios to showcase uh, how they do for biodiversity. So there are lots and lots of little boxes here, but you basically have uh, three sets of rows here, and each row is one of the different scenarios. The top one is the best climate scenario, the middle one is that medi a medium one, and the bottom row of the three pairs of rows is the worst climate scenario. And then each of the columns represents a different area of the world. And what you can see here is you can probably see those blue bars popping out as going up in direction. And those are those material or instrumental values that we're saying we're usually doing a pretty good job about trying to manage these because people benefit directly from them, whether it's for food or timber or fiber and those things that we've mentioned earlier. On the other hand, you can probably see that those orange bars typically are going down and those white bars are going down. So the orange bars are our biodiversity, our species richness, our threatened species, and our uh, white bars there are the ecosystem services that we often forget uh, that nature is providing for us. These things like climate mitigation and water purification. And so this slide in summary is basically showing us that these scenarios to meet these climate targets, whether we're aiming for 1.5 or 2 or 3 degrees of increase, none of them actually do the job for biodiversity. And we need different options to actually get to those biodiversity targets. Uh, so this is what we've come up with. This is the Nature Futures Framework. And um, on the left-hand side, we have a triangle that has these three different types of values. So it's a new scenarios framework based on values for nature that can help us identify many different possible futures that are positive for nature. You'll probably notice on the right, we have something a bit different there. This cosmology is then something that a lot of our indigenous communities saw as something that was parallel, but in many different knowledge systems in the world, it's actually a struggle for them within their cultural context to separate the difference between instrumental or relational or intrinsic values. So within, just to remind you of the Nature Futures Framework, what are these different value types and how can we use them to create different types of scenarios? Well, here I've got some pictures from my home country of New Zealand, but nature having intrinsic values, these would be things like endangered species or national icons, landscapes, seascapes, Biodiversity. On the bottom there, you'll see one of my local gully restoration areas just in Hamilton, New Zealand, where I live. And we know quite well how to protect nature in terms of using national parks or restoration type strategies. Rewilding is becoming more common. So we have lots of techniques we can use to, present, to uh, protect these intrinsic values of nature, include these in scenarios. Uh, and then we have these instrumental values. Again, we're already very good at doing these. Uh, you can see things like protecting fisheries. That's my favorite crab there up on the left. That's the Dungeness crab, which is a local San Francisco delicacy where I was born. But you also have those ecosystem services. So down on the right, we have services provided by mangroves. So things like coastal protection, climate regulation. Uh, and how do we make sure we're protecting not just those food production or timber production values, but also these other values that are provided for us. And then finally, these relational values, these things that are a little bit more difficult to quantify. And often in indigenous cultures, we're very good at recognizing what these values are, where we see cultures that are directly connected and having that direct relationship with nature. 
But if you'll notice on the top right, there are a whole series of pictures of how many of us who live in urban environments often connect with nature. And certainly in these COVID years, we're recognizing the value that people have of being able to reconnect with nature, to be able to go out on walks and experience nature, but also have that proximity to places, whether it's uh, going, these are pictures of my children up here, uh, visiting a farm. And I grew up in summers going to farms in Recreate or reconnecting with nature through farming, fishing, snorkeling, not just on our holidays ideally, but also can we recreate these aspects of nature in our cities? So again, going back to the Nature Futures framework, the idea is we're taking these three different types of values for nature and then bringing them into different positive pathways for nature. And there are going to be many of these options. And what we can do then, what Shizuka and I do, is then in our offices we can create models on our computers that showcase how well each of these different actions that we take will get us toward the future that we want. Uh, and just to give you an example of how different these types of futures can be, here's one example looking at different ocean futures with the Nature Futures framework. The one on the left is Nature for Nature, and here we're valuing lowering the footprint of humans, so maximizing the amount of space for nature and minimizing the impacts that people have on nature, which is quite different from the nature's culture in the middle, where we're showcasing how we can have people directly involved and directly connected with nature, whether this is through customary fishing practices shown here or recreation in the marine space. And again, this is different from that nature for society. So nature for society where we're looking at how much we're actually bringing out materialistically from nature to support people, but doing this in a more sustainable way. Now we've done similar types of landscapes for urban landscapes. So again, cities can look quite different depending on how we model them in the Nature Futures framework. And there have been exercises done where people have actually quantified these now to look at different targets. And finally, rural landscapes. So how would we design our rural landscapes differently if we were showcasing these different types of values? And I just want to point out the important part is by bringing this new nature futures framework into the policy space, it means we're identifying all three different types of values have importance. And just by identifying these values and providing a place for them in decision making, that alone helps us both bring all the different aspects of society and the, those different values to the table to help us inform decision making. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, thank you, Karin, for, for your presentations. Um, I, actually, it was very interesting to know, I, I know her presentation a lot, um, but I, <laughs> um, to know how the three very perspectives um, of the nature, actually, it was uh, already um, presented in the Dr. Swain's Arn's presentations. Um, so how those uh, three very perspectives are embedded in the framework that help us discuss the desirable futures. So, so using this nature futures framework, we can communicate with other people how they value nature differently. For example, we prioritize, uh, for, in my case, for example, I, I'm located in between nature's culture corner and nature uh, for society uh, corner. While some people prefer to, to locate themselves very, very close to nature for nature corner. In this way, you know, the Nature Futures Framework can be used as a communication tool for stakeholders, uh, among the stakeholders, to share different perspectives. Of course, this tool is also useful, or the framework is very useful for, for the scientists to quantify the different perspectives of the futures. But in this way, we are trying to, um, to help uh, stakeholders or the various uh, people discuss the desirable futures rather than imposing existing scenarios to them. Um, so um, I think that's a, a very big step and we need to do a bit more work to, um, uh, so that uh, this uh, framework will be uh, more, uh, more popular. But uh, um, I think I believe the new framework will help us um, recognize the, the different various perspectives other than instrumental worries, because uh, we tend to focus on instrumental aspect of the nature when we discuss what the value uh, 
you know, the nature or in the, our decision making. So now the end of our session is gradually approaching, but before we close, I'd like to ask all the panelists to share with us uh, the take-home message uh, of this session by responding to my questions. You don't need to respond to, to these two questions at the same time. Um, well, you can choose just one, maybe, uh, depending on your preference. So, so two questions from me is, what can or should we do to make a transformative change towards sustainability happen? What is the role of value in such a transformative pathway? So it's uh, more for, uh, for the people here or people online listening to our presentation, our, our sessions. So, so for individuals or for, for the people as collectively, what can we do uh, to make uh, this transformative change happen? What's the role of the values? Um, so can Unai, uh, Pascal, go first? Um, are you OK? or? Yes, that's fine. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> well, that's uh, 1 million euro or yen or whatever <laughs> currency we want to use question. OK, what should we do? <clears throat> well, there are many things that we have to do at the same time. Um, the <clears throat> what I would say is at the center, at the core of, of what we need to do is to transform the most hegemonic or the most powerful um, norms and rules that guide society. Um, when I say this, I'm talking about how our country constitutions our pl or our planning uh, rules and norms in our cities or our international trade agreements, how they take into account the multiple and the diverse values of nature how they take into account the fact that if they focus too narrowly or even if they don't focus at all on any value about nature um, or very marginally, uh, that is going to have an impact uh, on everyone on the planet. And this impact is going to feed back into those same rules that we have already put in place and they would have to change at some point. I think we are... Uh, realizing with the climate crisis, but also with the biodiversity crisis, that our government policies uh, need to strengthen to protect our climate. They need to strengthen to protect our biodiversity. Uh, but we cannot do that if we don't change uh, many other rules on education, on how business operates, on insurance companies, and so on and so on and so forth. So I think putting the values of nature at the core of the big transformations that uh, social rules and norms and policies require is, is at, the, at the high end of the pyramid of what we need to do. Once we realize about that, and this is not easy to do, of course, uh, it will take time, uh, but we need to, to be very clear that this will have to happen sooner or later. The sooner it happens, the smoother it will be our transition towards a better future. The, the more time it takes, the more the more bumpier our right will be to try to transform uh, our societies <clears throat> if we ever can transform them once we have passed some tipping points or some irreversible domains when it's going to be so hard to uh, to improve uh, the material uh, aspects of, of humanity uh, their cultural uh, aspects etc so uh, still we have time to do this but uh, we should believe that it is possible to do it. This is not just a theoretical idea. Uh, scientists around the world working on biodiversity and climate issues, they conform and they concur uh, with, with this idea that transformational change is, is required. And recognizing all these values of nature is really at the core of that transformational adventure. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Unai, for the com comprehensive uh, take home um, message. So um, now I direct to invite uh, uh, Swayun. Are you ready? Thanks. Um, Unai um, summarized well with the different perspectives uh, about what we need to do as uh, uh, individual and uh, collect uh, or society and institutional and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I uh, didn't have much to, to add it, but um, since I have, uh, have been working uh, with uh, methodology, 
I just uh, like to uh, emphasize that the, we have to have uh, insight uh, to, to choose appropriate method in terms of uh, mm. uh, uh, in line in align with the uh, purpose of the uh, method. We, uh, we uh, realize that sometimes um, uh, the, there is a certainly gap between uh, the context of the valuation context and uh, a mismatch with the methodology. And so that can be a one area that scientists or, or uh, research can do. And also, um, I think as an individual level, we have to have open mind uh, to, to accept uh, the, uh, the diverse values, the concept of diverse value from other people which, have, uh, which might have a different ideas about the values and because they have a different background. So we have to have uh, an open mind uh, to embrace uh, the uh, concept of diverse values. And that's, that's it. Thank yep. you. Uh, thank you, uh, Thorum, uh, for, for the comment. Yes, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, that uh, uh, choosing the right methodologies for variation is also uh, important. So, so I'm waiting for, well, actually, I only mentioned about the SPM translation into Japanese. Well, now SPM is available in five UN languages. You know. um, in addition to that, some countries are making some great effort to translate the SPM document into their own languages, and Japanese is only one of them. Um, yeah, I, I just want to mention it. So now, uh, Karen. And thank you. So I, I think in um, the type of um, science that I work in, it's developing the scenarios that actually include these, as uh, Soyun said, these different methodologies for valuation, but also for making sure that we have different indicators of these different value perspectives. So making sure our indicators that we use, um, most of you will be familiar with GDP, and GDP is quite different from things like a well-being index that actually bring in a diversity of other types of values. And we can do the same thing for nature in the types of decision-making tools we have where we're not only putting numbers beside food production in timber harvesting in those other material or extractive uses, but also putting numbers within our values for nature for itself and for those relational or cultural values that we have for nature. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Karen. Uh, very brief comment, right. Yeah, actually, it's uh, uh, almost the time, but uh, um, well, all of your talks were were eye-opening and providing new perspective to us, and uh, especially on the diversity of nature's values. You know, there are other values other than the instrumental values. And we also understand the importance of recognizing these different value perspectives to realize just and sustainable um, futures. So um, with that, I'd like to close these sessions. So thank you very much, uh, everybody here. Um, and busy schedule, thanks. So now over to you, Mikisan. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor Hashimoto, Professor Pascal, Dr. An, and Professor Lundquist for bringing our attention to the importance of understanding the value of nature to achieve a more sustainable future. Please give another big hand to the panel.